There I was, mid-PhD, when I found out that in the ocean, under certain circumstances, some bacteria are more abundant in certain types of plastics than others. But what I and other scientists didn't know was why. There are many possible answers to this question, and finding it out is essential to understanding the fate of plastic in the oceans and its impact in the marine environment. So I set out to investigate it. This is part two of a two-part series where I talk about the research I did during my PhD, and you can check out part one right here. But here's a quick recap. There are bacteria in the ocean. Some of the bacteria like to live attached to stuff. Bacteria that like to attach to stuff also attach to plastic, because plastic is stuff. They do so by creating a layer on top of the stuff, composed of some sort of bacterial glue themselves, and whatever gets stuck in this glue. Other bacteria, other organisms, and whatever is passing in the water at that time. There are different types of plastics, meaning plastics with different molecular compositions. But what I found out is that it seems like some bacteria species seem to prefer to attach to some plastics than others. Sometimes. For more details, check out the video. There are several explanations as to why this happens. To determine whether any or all of these explanations hold water, we have to test them individually. And I was specifically interested in plastic-eating bacteria. There might be some bacteria that are attracted to certain plastic types because they can eat them. There wasn't much known about the potential of marine bacteria to degrade or eat plastic in the ocean or even in the lab, so I was onto it. I decided to test whether there are bacteria living in this layer of goo that I just told you about before that can eat plastic. But not all plastic, because that would require 20 PhDs, and who has time for that? I only focused on bacteria that could potentially degrade polyethylene, which is the most commonly used plastic worldwide. So I went to Croatia, to the Adriatic coast, to collect my samples. We took our lab and fieldwork equipment, jumped on a van, then jumped on a boat, and collected a couple of plastic pieces that were just floating around the sea. The pieces were immediately transferred to sterile seawater and taken to the lab. These pieces were then transferred to a new bottle with fresh, sterile, artificial seawater every three weeks for two years. <laughs> Why the hell did we do that? Bacteria, just like humans, need to intake carbon to survive and thrive. We do that by intaking food. Bacteria do that by while also intaking food. But bacterial food can be a lot of stuff, and I was particularly interested in finding bacteria that could have polyethylene in their menu. One of the ways to find these potential polyethylene-eating bacteria is to remove all other food sources and see if there are any bacteria that can survive just with plastic as their food source. By always putting plastic into new sterile artificial seawater, yes, you can produce artificial seawater in the lab, FYI, we are slowly removing non-plastic carbon sources that might have come attached to the plastic, or even that cells, until the only carbon source that is viable is the plastic. Basically, we are just providing a selective advantage to bacteria that can eat plastic, because the other ones will either probably die or just be slower growing. This experiment lasted two years, and after one and two years, we collected samples from our bottles for DNA analysis and bioinformatics. I am not going into detail on what any of that means, but if you are interested in knowing what bioinformatics is, check out this video. But, but, through those analyses, we found two very interesting things. First off, after two years of only having plastic as their sole carbon source, there were bacteria surviving and thriving in our bottles. There were more than 1,000 species living attached to the plastic when we collected the plastic from the ocean. In our experiments, after two years, there were only between 30 and 60 species living attached to our plastics. We narrowed down a community to a very specific community that can live with plastic as their sole food source, a strong indication that there are bacteria in these communities that can eat plastic or some part of it. Second interesting thing, some of the bacteria that seem to be the most successful, meaning they were present in higher abundances in our incubations after two years, were related to oil degraders. Polyethylene, as many other plastics, is made from oil and has a very similar molecular composition to some components of oil called alkanes. This is interesting because it has been hypothesized before that if there are bacteria in the ocean, 
solution that can degrade polyethylene, they might be the same ones that can degrade oil. All right, so what is the answer? Did we find plastic eating bacteria? Are they going to save the world? Can they degrade the plastic in the ocean? Mm, yes more or less, kinda, sometimes. <laughs> Despite the results I've just presented, I actually failed in obtaining what I wanted. It's part of PhD life. What I wanted was to obtain one single species that could potentially degrade polyethylene, not a whole community of 30 or 60 like I did in my incubations. I wanted to obtain only one species to be able to study it in detail, to understand if it can indeed degrade or eat or whatever you want to call it polyethylene, what are the processes it uses to do so? And most importantly of all, try to understand which part of the plastic it actually eats. Because plastics, the ones we use in our everyday life, usually are not pure polymer. They have impurities and they have additives, which are compounds added during the manufacturing process to increase their performance, their durability, to prevent them from being biodegraded. Haha. <laughs> so what I know through my experiments is that there are bacteria that can degrade some part of the plastic, but we don't know which part that is. Are they degrading the polymer itself, the impurities, the additives, all of them, some of them? We don't know. And this is really important to understand if we really want to understand what is happening in the ocean. Because this will determine whether the bacteria in the ocean are degrading the plastic to its most elemental forms, like water, carbon dioxide and oxygen, or if they are only breaking down certain parts of the plastic, splitting a bigger piece into nano and microplastics, which is not great. And this is much easier done when you can manipulate one single bacterial species. Also because when we have a community that has 30 different species, we don't actually know which of the bacteria are degrading the plastic. We know probably some are, but we cannot determine which ones exactly. If you wanna read my paper, which I will link down below, we do provide some hypotheses as to which are the bacteria that are probably degrading the plastic, but I will not go into that in this video. But it's all mostly speculation because we didn't test it. We would need to test each individual species for their ability to degrade plastic because it is very likely that only some of them are degrading the plastic or are using the plastic as their food source. And then there's the other other ones which are piggybacking on those that are degrading the plastic. They are surviving on dead bacteria or from products produced by those polyethylene eating bacteria. It's like a little microcosms just living on top of that plastic. The reality is th these mechanisms are so complex that you really need to simplify them as much as you can to be able to really determine what is doing what. And then you can slowly add complexity and see how things go from there. There are techniques I could have used afterwards to facilitate isolating one single species like plating, single cell genomics, but one only has so much time in their PhD. And all these things require not only time, but money. Something that we know that unfortunately environmental projects do not have much of. So we did find bacteria that can survive on the plastic, but not everything is good news. The bacteria that we suspect are the main polyethylene degraders are very, very scarce in the ocean. Just because something happens in the lab, doesn't mean it happens in nature. So to answer the question at the beginning of the video, are there certain bacteria that prefer certain plastic types because they can degrade said plastic? Well, our results suggest that Maybe. There is still a lot of research that needs to be done to understand these things. And we are getting there slowly. Even though I did not really obtain the results that I wanted to when I imagined this experiment in the naivete of my <laughs> pre-PhD per person, persona, I don't know what I'm saying anymore, I need water. I still added a drop to the ocean of knowledge <laughs> by slowly testing different things, by adding pieces to the puzzle slowly, and you slowly understand what this puzzle is supposed to show you. What did we learn? Yes, there are bacteria that can degrade some part of the plastic, which one we still don't know. They do so at very slow rates in the lab, 
probably even slower in nature when they have other food sources available, especially because the bacteria that are probably capable of degrading the plastic are very scarce in the ocean. Science is a process and it's never ending. And the more questions you answer, the more arise. This video has been a long time coming. I promise I would do this video already. I don't remember when I posted my part one. So I hope you enjoyed it. Christmas is slowly creeping in on us. So if you have kids, you would like to offer some really cool ocean stuff. Here is a really cool book. I don't know who wrote it. You can also check out my clothes store, everything down below, my affiliate links, all the pizzazz. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Share it around with someone who you think might like it. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon for supporting what I do. And I hope to see you in the next one.